Hello, my name is Daniel Marler. I am the Math Viking, and I'm here to discuss my portion of my group work. This video is for ELED 4311-006, Teaching Mathematics in Early and Elementary Education, taught by Dr. Lee. This particular assignment is the Math Activity Set Presentation Group Work. My group consists of the following members, myself, Daniel Marler, as well as Bethany Martin and Amy Ta. We wanted to do our math activity assignment over fractions, and we chose Grade Level 3, TEKS 111.5, Subsection A. That section involves using concrete objects and pictorial models. My first responsibility in the group was to create a brain teaser. This is the brain teaser that I created. It consists of a one-page, double-sided brain teaser slash worksheet. This is the front side of the brain teaser. The brain teaser is called Math Challenges Pizza Shares and consists of the following question. Which group member will get the largest amount of pizza if they split the pizzas evenly between all members of their group? Group A, two people share five pizzas. Group B, three people share eight pizzas. Group C, four people share nine pizzas. And then the brain teaser continues with the following instructions. Use the box space below to show your work and circle your answer. The student will use the space inside this box to work out the brain teaser problem. Once they come to an answer or solution, they will circle that answer. On the back side or flip side of the brain teaser worksheet, it continues with the instructions, write at least three sentences explaining how you found your answer and what strategies you use to solve the problem. There's plenty of space for them to write those sentences. As a reward to the student, once they've completed the brain teaser, there is some artwork on the back that they can color. They could also color the smaller artwork on the front if they wish. My other responsibility in the group was to create a game. I created a monster equivalent fractions board game. I made this board game using a piece of foam core board and markers. I scored the back of the board to create flaps in order to protect the game board surface. Once you open up the flaps, the game board is revealed. It is very colorful and has cute, fun monsters to entertain the students. This game can be played by only two, a minimum of two students and up to six students. Each student will receive a different colored game piece that they will use to represent themselves as they move across the game board. Once the students decide which color they want to use, they will place their game pieces on the start circle. The next thing for the students to do is determine which student will go first. This can be decided by either a roll of the dice and the highest number of, uh, gets to go first, or they can do something more fun like whose birthday is coming up next to determine who goes first. Once they decided who's going to go first and in what order the others will follow, they'll set the die off to the side. Also on the table, same table they're playing on will be some blank pieces of paper and some pencils that the students can use to work out any problems if they need to. It's not necessary for them to do that, but the paper will be available if they need it. Also, with this game comes approximately 40 cards. These cards on one side have a question or problem to solve, and on the opposite side has the answer to the problem. Before they start playing the game, it will be required for the students to shuffle the deck of cards and place them off to the side. The problem side should be always facing up and the answer side facing down. Whoever's going to go first will roll their dice. The example here, it landed on six. 
but before they can move their piece forward six places, they will select the card on the top of the stack. They will read that card and solve that problem either in their head or using the paper we discussed earlier. They will show the card to their fellow players and they will reveal their answer to the problem. The other players will look on the back of the card and determine whether they provided the correct answer or not. If the student provided the correct answer, then they can move forward the six spaces that they rolled. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then it will be the turn for the second player to go and they will proceed the same way accordingly. You can also see on the game board there are decision spaces such as lose a turn, move ahead three spaces, go back two spaces, roll the dice again, and others. If they were to land on one of these spaces, then obviously they will follow those directions. The winner will be determined by whoever gets to the finish line first. If time runs out in the class and there's no longer enough time to finish the game and nobody has reached the end yet and the teacher calls time, whoever is closest to the end will be declared the winner. This will be a fun game. Uh, and it will also give the students an opportunity to practice their fractions and equivalent fraction problems. Thank you for watching my video.